Well, and let's just pick up on, on the argument that was just made there. Uh, one man killed on the day, but does it strengthen the ideology behind the victim? Uh, thanks for hosting me. Well, let me say that uh, this is a very typical Israeli assassination. And as you just indicated in your program, Israel has been doing uh, uh, this kind of assassinations against different Palestinian leaders and different Palestinian factions. Uh, uh, this is not the first time Israel has gone after uh, top senior leaders uh, of Hamas. Uh, if we all remember back in 2004, Israel killed the founder and the spiritual leader of Hamas, Sheikh Ahmad Yassin, and a month later uh, also killed, uh, killed and assassinated his uh, successor, Abdul Aziz al Rantisi. Uh, and that didn't put an, uh, an end to Hamas, that didn't put an end to the Palestinian resistance and against the Israeli occupation. Uh, actually, the opposite just happened, uh, that, that Hamas uh, continued its, its struggle and its resistance against Israel. And uh, uh, we can very much say also Hamas became much more radicalized after the killing and assassination of its founding uh, leader, Sheikh Yassin, back in 2004. Uh, I guess uh, uh, as long as there is going to be an Israeli occupation and there is going to be an Israeli aggression, against the Palestinian people, we will always expect that there will be Palestinian resistance and there will be leaders who will carry on uh, with this struggle and resistance against the Israeli aggression and against the Israeli occupation. In theory, we live in a, a modern world of law and order. Um, this was an extrajudicial killing. Uh, there was no trial. It was carried out on another nation's sovereign territory. Do you think we'll hear any condemnation coming from any of Israel's allies? Um, I don't uh, know exactly if you, if you mean the US. I don't think that the US is going to condemn uh, such an attack. Uh, 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 the US uh, has, uh, I believe, uh, 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 indicated that Tania is, is uh, uh, the chairman of a terrorist organization, and killing Hania or assassinating Hania will not be uh, condemned by, by uh, 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 the U.S. Um, now, it, it, it seems to me that the U.S. even uh, probably gave a green light for this assassination. It's not a coincidence that this assassination just, just comes three days after Netanyahu uh, delivered his speech and uh, left the U.S. after uh, top meetings with, with U.S. President Joe Biden, his vice president Kamala Harris, and also the Republican contender for the uh, U.S. Uh, presidency, uh, Donald Trump, who, in a way, uh, 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 encouraged the U.S. administration to give uh, Netanyahu the tools that he needs to finish the job or to finish uh, uh, the uh, onslaught uh, and, and genocide against the Palestinians in Gaza. I, I think uh, uh, there, there are definitely uh, American blessings for this assassination. Uh, 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 I don't think that any, any country in Europe will dare to condemn uh, this, assassina as this assassination as long as uh, many, much of Europe has dis designated Hamas as a terrorist organization. Mekhaimah, the indications from Joe Biden were that he did want a peace deal to be worked towards, that uh, he did want the war in Gaza to end. Israel's just gone out and killed the chief negotiator from the opposite side. He is on, on a period now of his presidency where he doesn't have to worry about the voting, uh, he doesn't have to worry about the support he has, President Biden. Could he just say, you've, you've crossed a line here now, we're going to reduce or even get rid of our support for you, Netanyahu? That's, that's what is expected from this U.S. administration who has been uh, uh, supplying Israel and with, uh, with, with weapons and the tools uh, that Netanyahu needs to continue his genocide against the Palestinian people. Uh, but I think uh, uh, there is a lot of hypocrisy when it comes to U.S. Uh, uh, policy and U.S. Uh, mediation or intervention in this uh, genocide. Uh, yes, the U.S. president has been uh, speaking uh, loudly about the two-state solu solution. He has been speaking loudly over the past 10 months for the need for a ceasefire. But in the meantime, the U.S. didn't do enough to put an end to this genocide, didn't put enough pressure on Israel and Netanyahu uh, to accept the Biden proposal that was uh, publicly announced by the Biden administration two months ago on, the, on May 31st. Uh, 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 
I think at the end of the day, uh, we have to listen to what Biden said uh, uh, more than one time. He said that he's a Zionist, uh, and it doesn't, he doesn't have to be Jewish in order to be Zionist. And that very much summarizes uh, 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 Joe Biden's uh, uh, intimacy with, with Netanyahu and with Israel. And, and taking into consideration that the U.S. is going into an election campaign this year, uh, we are not really expecting that the U.S. is doing enough to put uh, uh, to uphold international law and to uphold international norms when it when it comes to killing Palestinian civilians, women and children, as Israel has been doing for uh, about ten months now. Mikhaima, appreciate your time and your analysis. Mikhaima Abasada, my guest, professor of political science at Yas Azhar University.